And welcome to Open Friday Coffee. And today we have Matt Roseman with our one minute tech tip. Go, Matt. Where am I going? Is there is there GPS? Uh, <laughs> Not up here, babe. Don't go into the mountains. <laughs> what about chat GPS? Ooh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the, I mean, the last thing I need is a robot following me, you know, for any extended period of time, so... Danger Will but, Robinson. Danger Will Robinson. Yeah, that was uh, that was an old TV show, was it not? <laughs> Just a um, little boomer humor for you, my friend. I I, I think I, I I've heard that saying before, but I think it's probably an old sci-fi TV. Just a little show. bit. Okay. Yeah. Lost in space. Lost oh. in space. Yes, wow. ma'am. Sandy is... for the win. Sandy for the win. Gold star. Um, that is so old school. Black it's like and white. <laughs> There's a new version of that that they did with Toby Stevens from Black Sails. It's really good. Interesting. So then we have a few sci-fi freaks and no offense, nerds in the room. So well, that's what I love about this community. <laughs> well, then I'll, I'll say, look, the, the new Star Trek out, Strange New Worlds is, uh, you know, on and uh, Lower Decks is coming out with season four. Can't wait for that. So. And of course, they had the crossover between Lower Decks and, uh, you know, Strange New Worlds, too, which I nerded out for, too. So speaking of nerdy. So in terms of the IT nerdy things that's going on, um, for those of you who have EVs or think about getting an electric vehicle, there was a, a consortium, I haven't said that word forever, uh, between like uh, BMW and um, GM and Hyundai and Kia and Mercedes, where they're going to be putting out 30 thousand chargers throughout this country and starting next summer with like amenities and canopies it'll be like you know like vip for getting your your car charged so they're trying to take initiative to get people in vvs because we are on record to have the warmest summer in 120,000 years and with global warming getting worse we have to start saving this planet for what, what's ever left, not just for this generation, but for younger generations as well. So I figure I should out with you. And for those who have Teslas, they've been overestimating uh, the range of EVs. So that's an interesting thing as well. In terms of the IT side of things, um, I know everybody loves to use their autocomplete and their autofill. Oh yeah, I can put that in my, in, in my, in my, in my Safari or Chrome or Firefox and everything fills in. Well, guess what? I know that makes you happy just like Pharrell, but guess what it also makes happy? The hackers. So the last thing you want to do is to sit there and to autofill your IDs and passwords because that's how people can compromise you. I know a way to circumvent that where you can have more peace of mind in that respect. And I have two, uh, you know, uh, Matt jokes at this point. So my friend's bakery burned down last night. Now his business is toast. <laughs> okay. And then the second <laughs> the one- bump. Exactly. And the second one, I can't believe I got fired from the calendar factory. All I did was take a day off. <laughs> so if, if you guys are having, uh, you know, more drama than, you know, the Barbie, Barbie what's the other movie, uh, Oppenheimer movie, I'll put my information in chat. I'm more than happy to help you guys out. Thanks for letting me uh, go on and speak to uh, Jeannie and I appreciate you. No problem. Matt comes on every week if he can. Sometimes he's actually working for a living. I'm joking. <laughs> and he can't make it. Um, and, but he always he always comes up with something for us. And the other thing I wanted to share with you is uh, Matt has helped me with my Macintosh. And I was having issues because I like to press a system until it says uncle. <laughs> right? And with all the video and broadcasting I do, he was like, Janine, Okay, let's fix this. And so I have hired Mac. He is somebody, uh, Matt, who has helped my Mac. And so definitely give him a look-see. Uh, he doesn't do just Macintosh. He is bilingual. He can do <laughs> PC as well as, as Mac. He maybe even can slide into the Linux. I don't know. Yes, we'll Linux, Linux, Chrome, and Android. So it, it's basically a PC potpourri. Also, I'll be speaking with you next month, Janine. We have to go Mac shopping. Yes, so. we do have to go. Yeah, he wants me to get a new computer. Go fancy. Just because mine's seven years old. I don't know why. <laughs> right. Okay. So that's Matt. Uh, Rich, uh, we'd love to have your one minute uh, design tip, if you don't mind. And then Sandy. 
And what I was going to talk about today was actually in the New York Times this morning. So I'm ex I'm like so excited about this. And the, the name of the column was What's in a Name, the, the Musk Twitter edition. I was going to talk about the two types of, of rebranding. One is evolutionary and the other is revolutionary. Evolutionary is when they tweak the font or they you know, slide the colors a little bit, but it's still very recognizable and very familiar and you don't feel shocked by it. Revolutionary is when you take um, a logo that's internationally recognized and you replace it with something that doesn't mean anything. And you all of a sudden have a very confused marketplace out there because they don't know what the hell is going on. There's no brand continuity. There's no consistency in the brand experience for the consumer. And I'm just beside myself that the New York Times read my mind this morning. So, so you want to really think about when you're, if you're doing a rebrand, you know, think about whether evolutionary or revolutionary, there's a place for both. And if you're not sure, come talk to me. Definitely chat it up with Rich. And then Sandy, hello, and thank you for joining us. It's good to have you with us. Good morning. Happy Friday. What's cooking in your world? How can we help you? Good morning. I'm uh, here in New Orleans. Lovely. And, and there's my little dog over there. <laughs> That's Twinkie. Uh, so it's nice, nice to see you all. The reason I'm here is because uh, Doreen, Do Doreen um, Downing, Downing, Dr. Doreen, yeah, Dr. Doreen, yeah. Uh, introduced me to you. And um, let, let me explain how I know Doreen. So I, I recently, well, first of all, I am a civic mobilist, a civic activist, community mobilizer. And um, I wrote a book about my work. And now I've I, I recently started a fantasy, and that is to do a podcast to help other people mobilize people in their communities if they think that needs to be done. And I'm having a lot of fun with it. And I just recorded my 79th episode. Bravo. Bravo. That, that's so, an accomplishment. Thank you. It, it is a fantasy because I'm born, uh, I can't heal like other people. And I was born and I, uh, because I hear differently, I speak differently. And I've, I've taken therapy. Uh, but to be doing my own podcast is really pretty wild, given my background. So but here I am. And the reason I'm on your show uh, on your in your coffee hour uh, is because do, I was looking for, uh, I'm always on the lookout for guests, for cool guests to have on my show. And I invited Doreen and then asked her if she could make a recommendation. She recommended you and, and you suggested, um, but I think you said something like you threatened me, <laughs> that you can't recommend someone unless they come to your coffee. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> you said, you, said um, <laughs> you very nicely said, um, sure, but first, I'd like you to come on to my to my coffee to my come to my coffee. <laughs> Just right. So yeah. No, go. I know. I love you, Sandy. It's lovely. <laughs> I, I I love humor. I love being poked fun of. You know, anything to get people to laugh because we take <laughs> things too seriously. And Lord knows, I do not take myself seriously. I take my relationships with people seriously, but I don't take myself seriously. So that's bravo. Um, but what I did tell her, because I remember the email is I no longer do one to ones, I just freaking don't have enough time and hours in the day. And so this is the only way my podcasters can come on and everything. I would love to be on your show. And I would love for you to uh, sign up to be a uh, speaker. Uh, if you have information that you think would be helpful to other entrepreneurs about what works as far as making money. So feel free to sign up as a speaker. All the speakers are charged a $47 fee. That $47 fee is then immediately donated to a nonprofit who is doing audiobooks, visual books for the uh, young children, children's books. And um, one of the things I love is that there was a uh, person who was looking reading these audio books, video books, they call it imagination books. And they have somebody doing sign language. They also, when the people are narrating the books, they also tell you what the pictures are doing. And this gentleman who was over 30 was like, I never knew Christopher Robin had blue check pajamas. Because parents always read him the story, but he never knew that Christopher Robin had blue check pajamas as he was thumping 
uh, Winnie the Pooh down the stairs. So that's what this nonprofit organization does. They keep trying to get me to be on the board. I refuse. I don't have time. I just shovel money their direction and say, just keep doing what you're doing. They got the rights to Winnie the Pooh. They got the rights to the Wizard of Oz, and they continue to grow and win a lot of awards. So if you have somebody that has a family member who has challenges with reading in the traditional, uh, what is considered the traditional way, please have them go to imagination books or uh, video books. And so that's where the 47 books goes is I just ship it. It's a way to help support that group. Uh, also, Winnie the Pooh will be introducing us at the conference. So <laughs> that will be the, the gentleman who did Winnie the Pooh's voice for the audiobook. Um, anyway, so uh, Sandy, anything else I can help you with or what kind of guests are you looking for? My the perfect guest for my show is somebody who has taken on some sort of force in their community. I'll give you an example. And, and a recent one was so interesting in Maryland, a woman had her pollinator garden and her homeowners association said, no, you got to rip out this pollinator garden, you know, which had milkweed for the butterflies. You get it. And she had to put in turf, the grass turf and something in her just said, nope, I'm, I'm going to fight this. And she did. And ultimately, uh, about a year later, the state of Maryland passed a law saying if anyone in the state of Maryland wants to have a pollinator garden, they are welcome to do that. Ah. So that's one example. But it doesn't have to be that it could also be an, an oil company or a chemical company or a big hog, a big ag. But it, it could be anything. In my case, it was the Army Corps of Engineers. Mm -hmm. um, that I took on and beat. So, so anybody who is, and also someone who's thinking about taking on a cause, but they're probably a little harder to find. Mm -hmm. Well, keep our ears open because we run into all kinds of different types of people. So thank you so much, Sandy. I appreciate you being here and, um, definitely reach out to, um, Tasha. Here is her email. Tasha is the lady that tells me when I need to be where. And she will, uh, if you send her an email, Tasha at the eightgates.com and say that uh, you'd like me to be a guest on your, uh, your show, she will be happy to make sure you get the media kit and figure out what dates work best for you and my schedule. Okay. You're welcome. Okay. So uh, that being that, uh, what else can I do for people? I know right now I'm in need of speakers who are authors, who have a book who are wanting uh, to share not only their message, but what works for them as far as making money, either with the book or through webinars or workshops or what have you outside of the book, how they went about that process. If they're willing to share that with us, I'd appreciate it. Uh, the other thing I'm in need of is sponsors for the conference. So website designers, publishers, and uh, ghostwriters <laughs> and other people. Um, I have a sponsorship opportunity for them where we have the summit guide where they'll get a full page ad in it. And then they get to be on the Janine Boland show. We drop the $600 fee, you know, that kind of thing. We give them a lot. We give you about, if you sponsor us at 2,500, we give you about $5,000 worth of promotion and credit uh, with it. But that is what helps pay for all the automation that we're going to be running. And the goal is to have a thousand people uh, in there. And then Lynette, thank you so much for putting the sponsorship in the, the thing. If you are not able to sponsor us, feel free to be an affiliate. We, we'd love to have you be an affiliate. That's wonderful. You can set that up as well. I, I wrote, I have a question. I wrote down to remind you of the podcasters conference coming up. Yes. Um, I forgot to add to that. That's my bad. Uh, Podcaster conference is in February. So if when you come back on to Open Friday Coffee, if you come back on Open Friday Coffee in November, remind me in November that I need to make sure we get you on uh, on that project. Okay, yeah. So, and what I'm going to do is we're going to have all the podcasters talking and speaking, and I'm going to invite my authors on so that we have the authors and we have podcasters and we just have a nice big conference and lots of breakout rooms for people to get to know each other and figure out what they want to do. Okay. So that's good. That's the, the vision. We'll see what actually happens as far as reality with all that. Okay. First of all, I just want to say 
thank you to everyone for showing up for Open Friday Coffee. You took time out of your Friday morning. I hope it was of value to you. I hope that you were able to connect with some faces that maybe you didn't know before. Thank you for being an entrepreneur. Thomas Jefferson mentioned in his writings, and yes, part of my master's thesis, I had to read all 21 volumes that that man wrote. And one of his sections on there, he says, America will always be strong as long as there are two types of people, farmers and entrepreneurs. Realize that you're helping support America. So if you feel the strain, that's why. I want you to reach out to another entrepreneur. Nobody in your family is going to understand what you're going through unless they themselves are entrepreneurs. Don't reach out to people who have never run their own businesses, okay? But if you start to feel the strain, call somebody. And you're welcome to call me. I just may not respond immediately, but I recommend that you get other people's phone numbers and reach out and call them and say, hey, I'm struggling with this. Please do not think the lone wolf model works because it doesn't at this day and age. And I know that there are those of us who would drop, you know, I drop everything when I can to pick up a phone and help a fellow entrepreneur, because I know what you're doing. You're actually supporting the economy. We just don't show up on the S&P because we don't have supposedly the biggest revenue, but yet we actually employ 50% of the people in this country right now, okay? And the numbers are going up. Mm -hmm. So realize that's why you're feeling the weight. Realize it's not you personally. Blow it off, get back into your happy place. I don't care what that is, what that looks like. Get back in your happy place. Go on vacation, Matt and Kimberly. <laughs> Go on vacation. Make sure to schedule vacation time for yourselves. Make, make sure you schedule retreats that is only to work on your business. That's what I do once a quarter is I take a three-day retreat. I go up into the mountains. I get find a cabin that's an Airbnb and I sit there by myself and I figure out, okay, what worked, what didn't work? What do I need to do? What I need to afford? It's the way that I've been able to stay in business since I was 10, okay? So you folks take care of yourself. Thank you for being with me and we will chat with you next week. Bye now. Yeah.